my name is Siddharth and I will be presenting the solution to problem two. So let's start. So let's read the problem. Let ABC be a triangle with circumcircle omega. ABC. C. It's circumcircle. And let G be the centroid of ABC. Okay, G. And we extend AG. Oh, no, wait. AG, AG, and CG. We extend them to meet the circle at A1, B1, and C1. Okay. So you just extend the medians, they intersect the circle at given points, and they've you know they've given us some angle conditions. Suppose angle BAC is equal to angle A1, one C1. So we have that this angle is equal to this angle. ABC is equal to angle A1, C1, B1. This angle is equal to this angle. And finally, ACB is equal to B1, A1, C1. So this angle is equal to this angle. And they want us to prove that ABC and A1, B1, C1 are both equilateral. Clearly, ABC equilateral would imply the other is equilateral because they're similar. Okay. Mm. So now they've given us a lot of angles and we're in a circle. It's very natural that we should just be able to angle chase and get some good condition here. So let's just go forward with that. They've given us, for example, that these two angles are equal. And since we're inside a circle, we know that BAA1 is equal to BB1A1. This is equal to this. So then the leftover angle, GAC, GAC is equal to the other leftover angle, GB1C1, just subtracting the two equal things. Uh, and an easy way to say this, see this is that A1, B1, C1 equal to BAC. That, that condition basically says that this arc is the same as this arc. And when we subtract the common bit, we subtract the common bit, we get that this arc is the same as this arc. Because BA1, the arc BA1 is common. So we get these two equal arcs. So let's mark that. And similarly, with the fact that that angle B1, C1, A1 is equal to ABC, we get that this arc is equal to this arc. Subtracting the common bits, we get that AB1 is equal to A1C. And so we basically just get the condition they gave us basically just devolves into there being three equal chords, uh, three equal arcs, called same thing. So AB1 is equal to BC1 is equal to A1C. And thinking about arcs in this way is nice because the length of an arc is a fixed thing. And so we kind of can tell if two, two arcs are equal, two angles are equal. It's also much nicer to subtract when working with arcs. So often it's useful. Instead of thinking about angles, we think about arcs. Okay. Now at this point, this is a much nicer angle condition. And we can just start marking what we have. So let's say this is theta then this would be theta and this would be theta because they're all subtended by equal arcs. And I think I'll just redraw what we have because it's from here, it's quite easy to see what's going on. You have the three medians and they've given us that these three angles are equal. Uh, let's call these medial points, the mid points, uh, D, E, F, D, F, G. And they're asking us to prove that this implies that A, A, B, C is equilateral. Because as I mentioned earlier, A, B, C equilateral implies that A, 1, B, 1, C, 1 equilateral because they're similar. Okay. So natural thing to think about here is because of look, looking at the configuration, we have these equal angles. This angle is equal to this angle. GAC is equal to DCG. And that is tangency, right? 
we have that DC is tangent to AGC. DC is tangent to AGC. And often when we're done, we have like simplify the angle condition. It's natural to just move on to POP, move on to finding cyclic quadrilaterals because that will start. That is then the uh, like the the transport to lengths lengths right. This is usually uh, good and transporting to lengths usually lets us finish as it does here. So this gives us the length condition that DC square is equal to DG times DA, but because AD is the median, this we already know that DB square is equal to DG into DA. And so because DB is equal to DC, again, and we would, from lengths, we go back to tangency, go back to angles, we get that DB is tangent to ABG. And so this angle is equal to this angle. And from here, we can clearly see that angle A is equal to angle B. And similarly, angle A is equal to angle C and angle C is equal to angle B, just applying the same tangency argument. So then angle A is equal to angle B is equal to angle C, implies ABC and by similarity, A1, B1, C1 equilateral. And once you have, once you've got near, there are other ways to finish as well. For example, you could notice that you have these three medians: theta, 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 A, B, C. And we know that this is A minus theta, angle A minus theta. This is B minus theta, and this is C minus theta. And this tells us that this angle is A and that this angle is oh, apologies. And this angle is C and that this angle is B, this angle is A and that this angle is C. Yep, and this angle is B. And this should, and we just have basically everything and you can, probably tell this is uh, somewhat of a sin, but I will go through the solution just because it's maybe somewhat natural. Like you have so much, it should be doable that we can trig bash from here. We know that sine theta by sine A minus theta is equal to AB by AC. Um, the derivation for this is just, or maybe I'll just go through it because it's, not very difficult. We call this D, E, F, sine theta by sine ADC into sine ADB by sine A minus theta. This is because uh, AD, sine ADC is equal to sine ADB. And note that sine theta by sine ADC is simply AC by DC, AC by AC, sorry is simply DC by AC and sine ADB by sine A minus theta is then AB by BD, which is AB by AC, right? But note that sine theta by sine A minus theta, this appears somewhere else. This appears in triangle ABG as well. Now looking at ABG, we get that sine theta by sine a minus theta is equal to AG by BG. But we've give, they've given us angles B and C here, that GF, that the medial angles in that triangle is B and C. So again, we can do the same argument that AG by BG is equal to AG by AF into BF by BG is the earlier argument backwards is equal to AG by AF that's sine AFG by sine C into sine B by sine GFB. 
And as earlier, these both add up to 180. So they're equal, it's equal to sine B by sine C. And this is well known as AC by AB. So AC by AB is equal to AB by AC, implies AC is equal to AB. So it can be trick bashed as well, which is, I guess, the, the spirit of RMO. So I thought I'd present that as well, but this is quite natural as well. Like it's not something that's, the trick bash is probably harder to spot than the, the POP bash. It's not the POP bash, it's the tangency based solution. So yeah, problem is reasonably good. It's just, the main ideas here would just be uh, this idea of subtracting equal angles from known equal angles. Because that's very useful in circles, especially because of the fact that arcs give this, there's this um, bijection between arcs and angles. You can just think about angles as arcs. And so uh, it, this just helps us think about subtracting much nicer. Uh, and from there, this noticing this tangency by angles, often either cyclicity, uh, you get either cyclicity or tangencies, both are like very abundant, especially when you have so many angles being equal, there will be some cyclicity or tangency. And then from there, you can convert the lengths and that will usually finish. That's, that's a lot of information. And trick bash is trick bash. Okay, next, we'll move on to the next problem. 